when we look at an aquarium, we kind of think of it as an innocuous environment. And we really don't think much about it. As I've said in past videos, <clears throat> I used to have trouble keeping goldfish. Barring that the goldfish are healthy to begin with, you should be able to keep them for years and years. But if you buy unhealthy goldfish, like the ones I bought from Thailand, that most of them wound up getting dropsy, no, those are not healthy goldfish, and they don't seem to take to our water conditions. However, the goldfish that I have in the aquarium are all from the United States, and they seem to be quite healthy, the Ryunkins and the Watkins I have. But when we think of an aquarium and we add goldfish to it, and uh, also this tank has two inches, two inch Bellagenites in it, and it's got five of those little guys in there. You know, we, we look at something like that and we don't think too much about really how dirty it is. What needs to be done? Do water changes need to be executed? And, well, just what the provocations of problems that will arise in the future. And I admit it that when I had goldfish years ago, back in the 70s and 80s, in fact, uh, I was not very successful, much like hobbyists are today. Not until I started using a slow-moving plenum and an anoxy filter or BCB bag and a canister filter that I found out that the goldfish survived a lot better. Like I said, as long as they're healthy to begin with, uh, back then, I'm still, I still think we were getting imports and stuff from China, Thailand, uh, Japan, but uh, the problems were problematic as far as the fish just never seemed to acclimate quite a hundred percent to our water conditions or how we were keeping them compared to American raised goldfish. But what this video is about is the aquarium and keeping such fish and how really dirty they are. So I did a little experiment to see if I put something in the aquarium, could it polish the water and um, how clean would it get it? And really how dirty was the water? Because I did a video and someone made mention, oh, there's a lot of particulate matter in your aquarium water. And I told them, yeah, I had just changed the water. Now, when I change water once a week, I take that water uh, out of the aquarium that's in the lanai and I feed the plants that water and put brand new water in. So really, I'm, I have to use the water anyway. I might as well use the water out of the aquarium, right? Makes sense. But uh, really, just how dirty is a goldfish aquarium? Because they're constantly getting, uh, well, as you know, I did a video on they're being fed four times a day. If you want them to grow, that's what you have to do. Feed them a lot. And the Bellazini also are being fed, you know, four times a day. But both fish have a tendency of picking up the substrate in their mouths and spitting it out. Uh, the Bellazini have a, uh, not only do they pick up the substrate and spit it out, but it also goes through their gills. You'll see a lot of the sand being expelled out of their gill. So we have two sets of fish in the aquarium that are constantly, well, digging around in the aquarium. And I can understand that if people do not understand how filthy, dirty an aquarium can get and what needs to be done in the right environment for the fish, why so many people drop out of the hobby. Okay, the first thing I did is I modified a little in the tank 
aquarium box filter here. It's a bubbler, but I modified it so it would connect up to the canister filter. I also <coughs> cut little square pieces of this poly filter material here that you can buy at like any Joann's Fabrics or any of your craft store. And I guess it's used for, I don't know what it's used for, blankets, whatever. It's not very big, uh, 10 by 26, and you get six of them in there. And I also use this filter for my replaceable furnace filters. I have furnace filters that you can actually take apart, and I put this in between two mesh screens and uh, put it back into the furnace. So I'm not buying, you know, $18, $20 filters for my furnace. I just use this and it works real good. And it doesn't put a strain on the motor and it's a lot cheaper because I think a bag of this poly filter here costs like 16 bucks a bag. Anyhow, the one thing that I have to admit that why this little experiment works so good is because on the F-Zone filter, I'm using this uh, very powerful Awaki pump. Now, these pumps, this pumps 475 gallons an hour, at, and it will go 15 feet of head. So it has a lot of torque for this filter. And this is the one I'm using on the Goldfish Aquarium. Now, as you're looking at here, this is the filter uh, after I just replaced it. But this now is the filter after only one hour of being in the aquarium. Now, you would think less than an hour, that wouldn't be that dirty. But like I said before, these are very, very dirty fish. Okay, this is the filter after it, uh, the pre-filter, I should say, after running about three hours. <clears throat> and I was really kind of shocked myself to see how much dirt had already gone into this pre-filter. You can imagine this is going into your canister, or if you had to hang on the back, how fast it would start clogging up. But look at, you can see the fish waste, you can see algae, you can see dirt already building up in there because the fish are constantly stirring everything up, plus the pump moving the water around. Now what you're looking at is after 12 hours, you notice how the poly filter being one inch thick has completely been sucked down by the motor because the motor is so strong because it is all clogged up. Look at that. That's only after 12 hours of being in the aquarium. I can only imagine if you were using a sponge filter or something, how fast it would get clogged up. But this goes to show you that uh, goldfish are very, very dirty. And that, look at that, how it's squeezed everything down to the point where the pump was still running and everything. But look at that incredible so here it is out of the aquarium as you can see it's not being sucked down but that's only because that top layer is so filthy full of algae dirt fish waste you name it it's in there this is what happens when you feed your fish four times a day this filth as you could see and this is only within 12 hours of running now you can understand why you need a filtration system that can handle this waste. And if you think this is bad, this is nothing compared to a pond with big, huge koi in it. I did want to show you this, that these F-Zone filters do have a powerful pump. But of course, the Goldfish Aquarium out in the Lanai, I switched the pump over from the standard pump that the F-Zone filter came with to a, you know, a walkie pump, which of course is a little noisier than the F-Zone pumps. And it uh, it's a lot hotter. It gets, they get hot 
But apparently, the pumps are so good, I've known people say they've ran them for 10 years straight with uh, no problems with these Awaki pumps. So that's something to think about. There's also another thing I wanted to bring up in the video. In order to turn off my lights and turn them back on, I've been testing out some products. And one product I really, really like is these Govi Home and in Brighton. These, these two are your timers. And today, <clears throat> you don't have to buy a timer where you have to set it. And uh, these are just little round things. You just plug your pumps in, your lights into them. As you can see, I have them for my 90-gallon tank lights, my goldfish tank filter. You can label them 90-gallon uh, aquarium CO2. I turn on and off everything right from my phone. I've been using these for over two years. They're very reliable. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon if you want. Uh, the Enlightened One, those you can buy at Lowe's, but I found out that the Govi ones, you can save about $5 if you buy them off of Amazon, like if you buy a set of four. But all my stuff is connected up right to my phone. So if I need to uh, do a water change, let's say, I can turn my pump off right from my phone and then turn it back on. Uh, my CO2, if I want to turn it off, exchange it. If I'm working on the aquarium, I can turn my lights on and off by my phone. And I can also uh, turn pumps on and off for my phone. Or you can set them on a timer if you want. But anyhow, I thought that uh, I would show this to show you that even in the aquarium, that the fish depend on a reliable bacteria colony or a reliable microbial population that will exist to keep your fish healthy, alive, and to combat any, well, pollution that comes into the aquarium. And this is where, like this BCB bag, for example, and using the kitty litter and stuff really comes in handy. Now, you can also use zealite. If you live in a country and you don't have kitty litter, you can also use zealite, which is basically almost the same thing. It attracts the ammonia out of the aquarium. And you let bacteria, though, grow on it, just like you would kitty litter. And that will then establish a uh, anoxic conditions if it's done right. Most people will like use zealite. And they'll uh, put it in a filter, run water through it real fast. It will help uh, stop, you know, ammonia buildup. But running it with a BCB bag or running it in, in a uh, canister filter or putting it into your aquarium for your plenum, really I found out that is a very good way of using the kitty litter, zealite, you could use oil dry or uh, safety zorb, it's called. These are going to be bought at your tractor supply houses. Uh, this is kitty litter. So if you can't find kitty litter, you can use one of the other products I mentioned. But in conclusion, this is just something that I feel that uh, doing this quick test to find out just how dirty the aquarium is. I was kind of shocked. It was just that dirty. But, you know, I can understand now when we look at something like this that uh, without understanding all the dynamics that go on inside of our aquariums, I can see where people wind up failing. They just don't understand. Like there was a young lady uh, on YouTube who had goldfish and they were constantly getting sick. Look at this. This is pollution within 12 hours. You got to have something to handle all this pollution. You, you, if you skimp, your fish are going to wind up getting sick. They're going to wind up having fin problems and everything else. And uh, and the Bella uh, 
uh, Genii, they uh, they also are a digger in your aquarium, moving substrate around, uh, siphoning it out to get food stuffs. So, you know, when you look at that, twelve hours, I I I couldn't believe it was just that dirty. And imagine this is being done. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, continuously, non-stop, this much pollution. And it definitely is something that I uh, think that people ought to think about when you build some of these aquariums. Why you may not be successful? Because if your substrate cannot handle the pollution that's, that's being made by your animals, you're going to have failure. So until next time, this is Dr. Norick. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.